hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel Ravi Bandera. hope you guys are feeling great and having a good time so guys today we're going to be reacting to um apostate claims to know the whole quran muhammad ali let's get right into this guys how are you, Afif? You good? Uh, uh, hi, I'm doing very well, uh, Muhammad. Uh, thank you for taking me on. Uh, I'm an ex-Muslim atheist and uh, YouTuber as well. And I had some questions uh, regarding jihad. And I wanted to, my goal is to challenge the co commonly held belief that Islam is a peaceful religion and that jihad is only allowed in self-defense. So there's a narration I wanted to bring up. This is from Sahih Muslim, uh, Hadith number 22. Okay, okay. No, no, no. Okay, let's <laughs> move it's, I feel like you came with a script and you're just going in, you know, you just, it's a conversation, right? How are yeah. you? You good? Yes, yes, doing very well. Usually, I do not allow many people who just on multiple different channels to come on mine because I, I believe they're just wasting time. If they were sincere, they already heard the message from someone. Else. But I, I try to allow even one chance for that individual. I speak to them at least one time. You said in the beginning of this talk that in the monologue that you wanted to, to start with, you said, I'm an ex-Muslim. Yes, sir. Okay. What other religion, other people on earth, do they ever start speaking saying, I'm an ex-Christian, I'm an ex-Hindu, I'm an ex-atheist, I'm an ex-Ignos? Do you ever hear this? Um, I very rarely hear, hear that. Okay. So why are the, the only people who quote-unquote leave Islam come and introduce themselves with something from their past that they quote unquote left. You left Islam, you're now an ex-Muslim. Why are you talking about something you've already left? I think it just helps people understand my my background, like the fact that I used to be a Muslim before. They understand like where I'm coming from and the fact that I have like an understanding of the basics of Islam. J okay, just so when I, that's how I introduce myself when I'm talking about Islam. Let me ask you this question. Just because someone left Islam, does that mean he knows the basics of Islam? I think uh, that's true. So you think everyone who left Islam knows the basics of Islam? Uh, that's my assumption, yes. That's a false assumption. There are many examples online of people who claim to, that they have left Islam who do not know the basics of Islam. There's, there is tons of videos online, tens of videos online of those individuals, tens of, of screenshots from social media in which they do claim that they left Islam while they do not know the basics of Islam. And you do claim you know the basics of Islam, you said? Yes, sir. Okay, can you tell me what are those basics? What are the main foundational things? Uh, just the, the, the five pillars of Islam, the Shahada, the, the declaration of faith, the... Okay. Five daily prayers, uh, giving uh -huh. zak zakah, uh, fasting. Okay, why is the percentage of zakah that is supposed, supposed to be given? I believe it's 2.5% um, of uh, of your savings. What savings are those? Like the, the savings that you ha you've you had yeah, like in your bank account for one for the amount of one year, uh, one calendar year in the Muslim calendar. So if I, I saved 100 pounds in my bank account for a period of one year, I give 2.5%. I think there's like a nisab, like there's an amount that above which you have okay. to give it. Do you know yeah. the nisab? No, I don't. I don't really. I thought you to. know the basics. How are you going to give the zakat if you don't know? You know, and it's a necessity to know the nisab because zakat is, a, is an obligation on every Muslim that he has to give. So he needs yes. to know what the nisab is in order for him to give the zakat. Okay. Yeah, but I left Islam before I even started earning any money. So that wasn't really pertinent to me. Right? <laughs> okay. So and you never had any, enough money in your life to, to give zakat? No, not when I when I left Islam. Uh, the shahada, salah, zakat, salm. Um, fasting during the month of Ramadan Okay And the uh, Hajj Do you know about Hajj? Uh, yeah, also I'm a Hafiz too uh, But I do know about the Hajj You are um, a Hafiz too? <laughs> yes, okay. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Yeah, uh, yes. read. Sayakulu Sufahu Mila Nasima Wallahum Ang Kiblati. Read. Audu Billahi Mina Shaitan Rajim. Bismillah. I'm just used to saying that. Uh, okay. This is from just two. Sayakulu Sufahu Mila Nasima Wallahum Ang Kiblati Himulati Kanu Aliha. Kulli Lahi Al Mashriq Wal Maghrib Yahdi Man Yashau Ila Surat Al Mustaqim. Wakadali. You're reading. Your eyes is, is obviously exposing the, the amount of lies you're making. <laughs> I'm not reading. Well, so look, Afif, why do you lie, Afif? Afif, why do you lie? You reading. know, you should be you should be more of an honest individual and oh, should, not, should not click. Okay, look look at look at the door behind you. Yes. Look at the door behind you. Yes. Okay. And read for me now. Wa minkum illa wariduha. Read. Wa minkum illa wariduha kana ala rabbika hatman maqdiya. Continue. I don't know the rest. I haven't read the Quran in like three, four You're years. You're Hafid. What happened? What surah is this? No, no, no. Look, look there, oh. please, Avif. Avif, yes, look yes. there. Okay, what surah is this? I have, I have no idea. So how are you half if you do not know what surah it is and you cannot finish the verses? Dude, I haven't read the Quran in like four years. But okay, right. okay, okay. Read from Sofa Nuslihim Naran. Sofa Nuslihim Naran. Sir Afif, go ahead. Yeah, tell me. Sofa Nuslihim Naran. Yes. I, I don't know. I can't remember. You cannot remember. What surah is this? I have no idea. Okay. So, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi Khalaqa Samawati Wal Ard. Read. Alhamdulillah, Alladhi Khalaqa Samawati Wal Ard. 
Uh -huh. No, no. Uh, this is the, the beginning of, of Surah Al-An'a. This is the first verse in the middle of the exam, Afif, please. No, no, why do you, why do you look okay, this way? Okay, okay, I wanted to get yeah. back to the topic, but I wanted to say something. Yeah, no, 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 but I, I, I want okay. to show. You do claim you memorized, okay? Yes, I do. So, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاقِعُونَ نَفْسَكَ Which surah is this? This is Surah al Kafiya. Al at least you know this one. At least you know this one. So now, these the easy questions you can know. Like Surah al Kafiya, which Muslim read on the day of Friday but to claim that you're a Hafiz and yeah. you cannot I answer easy questions that I was asking you like the beginning of Surah Al-An'am can I answer basic questions that I was asking like the end of Surah Maryam uh, you do not know how to finish do not come and claim to us that you memorize the Quran no no I did memorize the Quran in the past but obviously I haven't read in the four no, years so, so you're not a Hafiz now not you are, right now, you are a forgetter. You are a nasi. You're the opposite of that. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So but, whenever you, uh, whenever you identify yourself, you say I'm a nasi, not half of. Okay, no problem. Okay, uh, but so when you know, come to the people, because when yeah. you come to the people and say I'm a half of, that means you memorize cannotly. That's what half of means. Okay. Does not mean in the past. It's not like uh, okay, someone asks me what is your job, and I say I'm a dentist, and I used to be a dentist when I'm no longer a dentist. Cannot say that. Because I'm no longer a dentist. Okay? okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. My 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 intention was not to say that I remember everything of the Quran right now, but my intention was to say that I'd memorize the Quran while I was a Muslim. Wow. I, I know. I know that if you ask me, if you ask me Surah Maryam, Surah Taha, if you ask me Surah Furqan, if you ask me Surah Tun Namal, I I will know. I will not know it. But yeah, my, yeah so you don't memorize. Okay, good. Yeah. So uh, so my uh, what I wanted to sh um to ask about is jihad, and what I wanted to narrate is this hadith from um Sahih Muslim number uh, twenty two. It says it has been narrated on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar that the messenger of Allah said I have been commanded to fight against people till they testify that there's no God but Allah that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and they establish prayer and pay zakat and if they do it their blood and property are guaranteed protection on my behalf except when justified by law and their affairs rest with Allah so uh, Prophet Muhammad said that um, people's blood and property will only be safe from him if they say there's no God but Allah, uh, do the prayer and give the zakah. So does that mean that the blood and property of peaceful non-Muslims who did not bother Prophet Muhammad were not safe from him because they did not testify the shahada, pray or give the zakah? If so, then why? The answer is you do not take the Islamic tradition with one hadith and then make up a kind of a belief and then leave the fact that there is tens of thousands of other hadith and leave the fact that there is a Quran, a full Quran, which gives you commands of what, and what to do. So you cannot take a hadith, which you, you, you mentioned right now, out of context, and then try to generalize that this is the only thing that Muslims can do, the only thing that Muslims do. Allah clearly mentions in the Quran that the people who do not believe, they have something which is called the jizya, which is mentioned in the Quran. Chapter 9, Mr. Memorizer, chapter 9, which verse? Verse 20. No, 29. Can you read from the beginning? Do you know uh, the verse? Uh, yeah. قاتلوا الذين لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الآخر ولا يحرمون ما حرم الله ولا يدينون دين الحق لا ولا يحرمون ما حرم الله ورسوله ورسوله ولا يدينون من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من الذين أوتوا الكتاب حتى يعطوا الجزية عن يد وهم صاغرون so you know very well that there is something called jizya and you're reading the, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and acting as if there is no alternative option which is clearly stipulated in the Quran and Surah Tawbah is from the last chapters that was revealed. So yeah. this is not something that happened, uh, this is clear cut in the Quran. Now the hadith that you quoted now to answer what you're saying, it says, Umirtu an uqatil an nas. You understand Arabic, yeah? Uh, a little bit, not very much, but I'm Indian by background. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so uqatil is from af'al al-musharaka. Can you tell me what af'al al-musharaka are? Uh, no, sir, I don't know what that is. Okay, af'al al-musharaka in the Arabic language, at least you're honest, which is, I like this. Af'al al-musharaka are, are the verbs in the Arabic language in which you need two people to participate in order for that uh, verb to happen. So here, uqatil here needs more than one person. Cannot be one person doing it. Aqtula is to kill. Uqatila is to fight. And in order for you to fight, you need another person to fight with. Uqatil al-nas, here in the Arabic language. It's from Af'al al-Musharaka. So it requires another person. And the only person you can do Qital against is a male combatant. Because anyone else, a child, a woman, an elderly man, a priest, etc., the Prophet explicitly prohibited fighting against those. So we understand now everything in context now. So when the Prophet said, Uqatil, Umirtu an Uqatil, here it is referring to other male combatants. So the Prophet was commanded to fight other male combatants. Here it says an nas. What does Anas mean? Uh, people in general. People, so includes even Muslims. Uh, Qatil Anas, yeah. So according to your understanding, you go even after uh, fight the Muslims because you're taking that hadith out of context. And the hadith does not stipulate anything there about the religion of someone. He says, La ilaha illallah. Maybe there's a Muslim who doesn't say outwardly, La ilaha illallah. He doesn't pray and gives the zakah. So according to your understanding as well, we start fighting that person as well with the, with the rest of the people. As I said, we take the hadith in line with everything else. 
Okay, so here, uqatil and as here, when you take that hadith in line and everything else, the Prophet ﷺ was commanded to deliver the message. The message must be de delivered to everyone. So if there is a nation that prohibits us from delivering the message, giving the message to other people, then we will do qital, we will do fighting, we'll fight against the government of that nation in order for Islam to spread in that nation or in order for the message to be delivered to the people of that nation. When you enter that nation, you're not going to force people to accept Islam, but you will fight the government, you will overtake the government to allow the message to reach. Prophet ﷺ had, had a, a, a methodology. First, he sends a letter, like he sent a letter to the Persian king, the king of Bahrain. He sent a letter to those kings and he said to them to accept him as the messenger of God. They refused. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he said to them, okay, let, let me preach the message. They say, no. He says, okay, let's do a treaty in which the Muslim traders will enter and then you can spread the message that way. They say no and they persecute people. Then Muslims believe that we do fight that other government in order for the message of Islam to spread to everyone. And when you look at the life of Prophet ﷺ, you see the application of that. There were people there, non-Muslims, living with the Prophet ﷺ under the Islamic empire, right or wrong. They were not killed. Then they, clearly you're not understanding the hadith because if the hadith means what you think it means, the Prophet would have gone and done things to them. No, he established that there's a, something called the jizya and they paid the jizya, which is mentioned in the Quran in the verse that you recited and you got the uh, number wrong and the recitation wrong, but you did recite well. So this is our understanding of the hadith. Is that clear? Yes. Um, my question is, uh, so this this is the verse I wanted to come back to Surah Tawbah verse 29, the one that says, um, I just want to read the translation really quickly. Fight those who do not believe in Allah in the last day, nor comply, nor com nor comply with what Allah and his messenger have forbidden, nor embrace the religion of truth from among those who are given the scripture until they pay the tax, uh -huh. willing, willingly submitting, fully humble. Uh -huh. so, so my question is, these uh, verses that were t given towards the end of the life of Prophet Muhammad, this is Surah Toba, as you mentioned, is one of the last uh, surahs in the Quran. Uh, so what did Prophet Muhammad and his companions gain out of invading other territories, killing their men, taking their women and property? Isn't Islam supposed okay, to be... Okay, okay, okay. Now you're making claims. Give yes. evidence now. Which uh, territories they went and they killed their men and took their women and property? Go ahead. Uh, there were several... Oh, yeah, look, you lied in the beginning about being a half and now you're making another lie. You make yourself look bad, which is not good. Where did Muslims go and take the properties of other people and take their women as you claim? Uh, yes. So they went, you said they went to their land yes. and in the land, they took the properties and the women. Yes, That's your sir. claim. Yes. Give me evidence now. Um, I'll leave you the evidence, but give me just one second. I just want to say I, I'm not all. I'm gonna give you one second. Okay, okay, okay. Give okay. Me the I'll give you the evidence. I know you're not uh, all knowledgeable. Who doesn't know this? I know yeah, very well. We yes, just yes. tested you in the Quran. We know you're not all knowledgeable. Yes, yes, yes. We so know, uh, right. in uh, Banu Quraida, okay. Yes. Banu Al Mustalik with um. Uh, Banu Quraida. What happened with Banu Quraida? With Banu Quraida, there was um a tree. Uh, so Banu Quraida were planning to betray Prophet Muhammad in in the Battle of Al Khandaq, and they betrayed him already. Not just planned. They betrayed yeah. him. They, they didn't. They didn't take up arms. They didn't have a chance no, because no, no, the Quraysh. They, yeah. they they didn't have a chance because they didn't have enough time and the prophet came back quickly. Yes, yes. yes. That doesn't mean they didn't betray him. <laughs> Just because yes. they didn't have enough time to actually kill you does not mean yes. they actually betrayed you. Yes, so, uh, so, so, yes. okay. So the, the, the incident of Banu Quraida is showing you lie because they didn't go and take a land and take the women of the people and do what you claimed they did. In fact, there was a treaty. People broke their treaty and then there was a fight and there was a siege and it was war. So it was not what you claimed. It was a group of people who betrayed the treason and they tried to kill the Muslims and take over their lands. So what they were trying to do, trying to attack the Muslims from the back and take over the land and take their women. So the fact is that Banu Quraida was doing what you're accusing the Muslims to do. Now, give me a clear cut examples in which Muslims went to a land, mm -hmm. took the homes of someone mm -hmm. you claimed, and mm -hmm. then took their women from mm -hmm. that land. Go ahead. Oh, okay, sure. Um, uh, there's a, there's one narration, I don't have it in front of me, but it says, uh, during the Battle of Hunain, uh, the Messenger of Allah sent us to Autas and we captured um, a group of excellent women. So, so during the Battle of Hunain, so this yeah. is a battle, war, yeah. Muslims yeah. are fighting against the Kuffar. Yeah. So it doesn't support what you're saying. It's not that they went to a specific land and they took over this and that. So now you're claiming there's they, they took captives of war in Altas. Yes. But that's not that was not your claim. Your claim was that they go into a land and take the mm -hmm. women in the land and take the properties in the land. Yes, sir. Because in Islam there's no such thing. There are prisoners of war, which Milk al Yamin, which is you want to try to mention now. This exists in war. These only people taken as prisoners of war. If I went to a land and I conquered the land and took over the land, I'm not allowed to take Milk al Yamin from the citizens who live in the land. There's no that's such not thing. True. Okay. Go ahead, give evidence from the Quran and Hadith that okay. you can you can make someone who is free a, a milk Okay. Other um, than in war. Bring me a scholar who said that. Go ahead. No, no. Well, give you, me you, evidence. You, you, give when, me evidence. When you invade another village and kill their men and take their women, isn't that doesn't that satisfy the condition of taking women as sex slaves? No, no, no. Again, we said in war, 
if we're fighting another uh, another people and we take captives of war, this is not going to a land. For example, when we had Andalusia, when, when they went to different parts of the land, they went to Egypt, when, when they went to these different parts, they didn't go and take the women they pleased from the population. That's a historic, I don't know what you're talking about. But again, I mentioned, I asked you, where is the evidence that you can take, which is explicitly, explicit hadith on this, it's haram for you to make someone free as a slave, to make someone free, free milk al-yameen. You cannot do that. The only way, which is a consensus of scholars, the only way someone can become milk al-yameen is to be a prisoner of war. That's the only path that is left open after Islam. You cannot take a free person like the people used to do, take a free person and then enslave them. But you're Christian, Afif, aren't you? No, no, I'm atheist. You're, uh, you're not a Christian? No, no, no. You were not Christian ever in your life? No, I was Muslim before. So where do you get the concept of right and wrong from? Uh, right and wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from uh, empathy, from the ability to uh, understand people's faint, uh, pain and suffering. Um, that's where I understand what is right and wrong. Um, like, for example, so, I know... So if there is suffering, therefore X is wrong. If I suffer, yeah. then that thing is wrong. Uh, yes, sir. If you cause suffering to somebody else, yes. No, but you said suffering. So just it is just causing uh, uh, someone else. What about myself? If I cause suffering to myself? I, 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 yes. Um, it's uh, wrong as well. Wrong. Yes. I okay. so. so if I'm a, bo a, a teacher who's teaching boxing and then causing suffering to my trainee in order for him to learn how to box, that's wrong according to you because I'm causing him suffering. If I'm causing suffering by training that person every day, waking him up in the morning, telling him to run, telling him there is suffering there. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's wrong according to you. Him I learning how to self-defend and increase and, and embitter his body. That's wrong. I think I didn't define it correctly. I think you have to add consent in there. Like if the suffering is caused without somebody's consent, then that's then that's what be wrong or immoral or evil. Okay, so if I, if when I don't consent and I feel a toothache in my teeth, which causes me suffering, which is actually giving me a sign that I need to go to a doctor to fix my teeth, that's that's bad. That's that, very pain, bad. that pain that helps me to save my teeth from losing my teeth is bad, according to you. Yeah. Okay, I think this, <laughs> this is the end of this conversation. Okay, sure. Uh, I, you can you give me just I, one you, minute. No, no, I can't give you oh, one okay. minute. Afif. Okay, no problem. Uh, all I'm going to say is the following. As an yes. atheist, Afif, you've got no grounds to say to anyone what is right and wrong because you've got no objective objective moral standard in which you can enforce on others. So you cannot come here to me. You can say subjectively what you think, as you said, empathy mm -hmm. and suffering. It's a subjective opinion. You cannot come and try to enforce this on us and say Islam is saying this, Islam is saying that, and it is wrong. Why does Islam say this and that? Because you do not have a, a criteria in order for you to identify what is objectively right and objectively wrong to begin. Okay. Anyways, I, I appreciate at least a little bit of honesty because you did lie, but I do appreciate at least, I would say, the good manners that you displayed in, in the discussion. Okay. Thank you very uh, much. I gave you a chance to come. You wanted to come and talk. I give you a yes, chance sir. to come and talk. I appreciate that. No problem, Afif. Bye bye. Okay. Wow, this is, um, this is, should I say, it's self explanatory already. He does not have basic ground, like he's, he's not sure of what he's saying. He is mixing it up. He's mixing them all up. And I'm actually happy that he is able to actually cut him. And, you know, before you cut someone, you need to know your ground and stand on your ground so well. So, guys, um, I've come to the end of today's reaction. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And before we go out there to say anything, we should have basic factor. We should check. We should stand on our ground and know what we're saying. You get, you should be able to differentiate from your left and right. I mean, I mean your right and wrong. You feel me? So we should not just come out to just say things which we're not sure of. Okay, guys, I love y'all. See y'all on the next one. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.